Summerland by Henu Raji Rajaniemi, I will say. I don't know how Finnish pronunciation works. Um, but like I said in another video, this author uh, wrote the Quantum Thief trilogy, which I really, really like. Uh, and this is the only other book he's published since then. Uh, although I believe he has one coming out relatively soon, if um, social, me social media rumors are to be believed. Anyways, this book, um, how would I describe it? I think it's listed as sci-fi, maybe, but it's, um, I'd say it's an alt-history, period piece, spy thriller, diesel punk, but with a supernatural twist. Um, I say diesel punk just because it takes place in 1938, even though there is, like, almost zero fossil fuel usage. Um, all the cars are electric, which is very interesting. Like, think, think of that as a, as a sort of a timeline. With the combustion engines discovered, um, or invented in, like, what? Late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, and in the early 20th century, electricity becomes sort of a major thing in all households and whatnot. And what if, um, sort of the combustion engine was seen as, like, fossil fuels was seen as, like, coal, like, sort of, uh, an outdated form, and electricity is the more modern way we go, so what if, what if all cars had been electric since the, like, 1930s and tw 20s and 30s, like, crazy, but it, it maybe could have happened. Anyways, um, and I say a supernatural twist, because this book is all about the afterlife. Um, the setup is that in the 1890s, um, some British adventures, explorers, slash, um, esoteric supernaturalists were, were doing some sort of, uh, like a Ouija board summoning thing and actually made contact with the other side and through the power of radio and the technologies of the 20th century, they have come to communicate with, um, the other side as it were, the afterlife. And, um, being the British Empire, they, of course, colonize it, and, um, they find, um, well, I'm gonna have to look at my notes, because it's, it's kind of a complex world. So, um, souls, there, there's, a, there's a fourth dimension, and I don't mean time. Um, let's say time's the fifth dimension. There's a fourth dimension. We can move forwards and back, up and down, left and right, but also in this fourth dimension, we can move from Anna to Kata. Now, I think that's the Greek Anna, as in bringing together, and Kata, as in coming apart. Um, so Anna is where the souls come from, and when uh, a, a certain time in pregnancy, when the brain is developed enough, um, the souls will latch onto the brain and possess it, and that's how a soul inhabits a body. Um, and then when the body dies, for whatever reason, the soul leaves the body and proceeds further down in the Kata direction to uh, this place that they call Summerland. And then eventually um, the soul will fade and um, travel even further in the Kata direction. Um, so yeah, souls can see electricity in sort of our world, in our three dimensions. They can only see electricity, um, including brains, uh, but through the use of technology, communication backwards and forwards uh, has progressed to the point where where we can communicate and actually see um, in between the other worlds. Um, so yeah, after a, a soul dies, it goes to Summerland, but eventually um, it will fade and, and lose all sense of self, identity, and memories and proceed in the kata direction. However, the sort of scientists and technologists of the British Empire have um, discovered these things called tickets, which are sort of four-dimensional constructs that um, citizens memorize. And if they have them memorized, then once they die, their soul can conjure up these images. And because in Summerland, anything you imagine can be made into reality, um, if they can remember this construct, this ticket, then it will serve to anchor their soul and their identity, and that way they can exist in the afterlife for a time. But they will still eventually fade and lose their sense of self and identity. 
um, more so if they are not um, fed or consume um, this energy source called Vim. So souls are made of two parts, a physical part called a Luz, Luz, L-U-Z, or a soul stone, um, and a, an etheric energy source called Vim, which in Summerland they have it literally plumbed through their houses so it comes out of a tap, and they drink it and consume it, and that's, what they, that's sort of the energy source they use to thought travel, just like sort of a teleportation um, they think of an, uh, an address of a location and they can go there, but it consumes this energy and if they consume too much energy They will lose themselves and fade and become nothing but this loves this soul stone um, These stones that um, Summerland is physically physically the the afterlife is physically built out of um, And these soul stones which are also mined um, So uh, Yes Summerland, it was built by a previous civilization, so when the British first start to colonize it, it was already there. They expected that all the souls of all the dead people from, from all of history should be in this afterlife. Um, and including aliens, there's a lot of alien talk, because they're like, if there are aliens out there, then when the aliens die, they should go to this place too. Um, but the British find it mostly abandoned, except for a few lost souls that are kind of cowering and hiding from something. Um, and that's sort of the whole crux of the plot, um, or the more overarching plot. There's a more grounded plot of the spies interacting, but the sort of the big secret and the big reveal at the end is, is that um, that there are these things they call the colors that when enough souls have, have passed over to Summerland at the same time, like a mass plague, war, etc., it awakens these, these, cons these colors that can rise up out of the kata and consume all of the uh, souls in the afterlife and that's why there's nothing left in the afterlife so that's sort of the main plot is where they have to pre prevent world war ii because if it happens then everyone in summerland will uh die they're already dead but um will sort of um be annihilated um so yeah and there, there's also like these aether beasts that are sort of at the lowest levels of kata that humans can get to where they mine which are like sort of once humans but are now very bestial i don't know they're only mentioned briefly um so historically we have queen victoria who's still ruling in 1938 but she rules from summerland uh, obviously because she's dead as sort of a an immortal queen i suppose an immortal empress um, but she's not really part of the plot i mean it's still the british empire it's not a it's not louis the 14th it's not a uh, an absolute monarchy but she's still there as the queen um she doesn't appear in the in the novel at all the the prime minister however does um he gave me big churchill vibes even though it was i think ne neville chamberlain in 38 um or maybe even still stanley baldwin but um I don't think he was meant to be a Churchill stand-in. Honestly, he really didn't seem much like Churchill at all. But for some whatever reason, that's what I pictured him as. Um, his name was H. B. West. I forget uh, Herbert Blanco West, but everyone calls him H. B. And he's like a writer. He's one of the ones who was involved in the discovery of Summerland, and he's the one who knows about the colors. And is working to try and prevent this war that would destroy Summerland. Um, he also uh, has fathered an Ill illegitimate son that no one really says out loud, but everyone sort of knows that he has this son. And his son is uh, Peter Bloom, who is a spy for the Summer Court. So we have the Winter Court and the Summer Court. Winter Court being the living world, Summer Court being the dead world. Um, and there's spies working on both sides, but there is quite a rivalry between the two um, But Peter Bloom is is dead and is working for the summer court. However, he's actually working for the Soviets um, So we have the two our two big sides is the British Empire and the Soviets and they're sort of the two superpowers um, not in a Cold War, but kind of, Maybe in a Cold War situation So post-World War one the British Empire made use of these, um, and with Italian help, 
um, the use of these tanks, these ecto tanks and these super soldiers that use soul power to not just kill but also consume the souls of those whom they killed to power the their their sort of machines and there were soldiers that could sprout wings. Um, the main character's husband, Joe White, um, was one of these soldiers who has like this armor that um, makes him sort of into a super soldier that can like sprout eldritch tentacles and wings and fly. And um, But he has all these souls within him that sort of kind of messed him up. In I don't know if it's like a PTSD analog um, or, or not, but um, yeah, he's he's has some issues post-war. Um, so yes, these tanks rolled over the Germans, won the First World War, or the Great War, of course, as they call it. This is 1938. Interestingly, there's no talk of Germany at all in this, so presumably National Socialism didn't take root in Germany, um, for whatever reason. Uh, but the main theory of war is, of course, the Spanish Civil War, which still happened in this universe. Uh, but interestingly, the British are backing Franco. So the British are on the side of the fascists because, of course, the Soviets are on the side of the um, the Republic, the Republicans. Uh, and it's it's sort of a proxy war in the midst of a Cold War, um, but they, neither side really wants to see an ex es escalation. Um, but sort of the main plot starts when this one Soviet spy defects and and joins the British. Um, and this this woman, Rachel White, she's a spy working for the Winter Court. She's still alive. She, it's her task to get information from this guy and, and figure out what he knows. Um, but he ends up shooting himself before saying, all I'm going to tell you is that I have uh, a spy working in the Summer Court, working for me, for the Soviets. Um, but... I'm done with it. I'm, I'm moving on. So he shoots himself, but he doesn't even go to the afterlife because he doesn't have a ticket. He purposely, purposefully wants to fade into oblivion. Um, so Rachel gets in all kinds of trouble for this. She lost this important asset. It wasn't really her fault, but she, she gets the blame. She's the scapegoat and um, she sort of gets demoted, loses her job as a spy, becomes just a secretary. There's a lot of uh, sexism in this book, um, which is a, very appropriate to the time period. Um, it might even be too light on on it. Anyway, so Rachel's like really bummed out, but she knows there's a mole, and whenever she tries to tell any of the other spies about this mole, they all sort of try and hush her up. Um, so she starts to think that it's this Peter Bloom guy who's the illegitimate child of the Prime Minister, and that's why they're all, uh, he's sort of um, untouchable. Um, so she's really upset about that. So she kind of goes rogue and, and, uh, with the help of, uh, another ex spy master who's in the, in the afterlife, um, the two of them sort of make a pact to try and get, hunt this guy down and find out if he's actually the, the, um, the double agent. So, um, so yeah, she, she tries to, um, so it's just spy stuff, like. She pretends to want to be recruited. He like goes to recruit her. Doesn't realize that she's trying to flush him out. He doesn't think that he she knows that he's a double agent and back and forth and back and forth. Um, and then there is a third sort of faction in all this. There is Stalin or um, what's his actual name? Zugoshvili or something like that. Um, but um, they're like, he also goes by the name of Stalin. Joseph, Joseph Stalin. Um, so he's Stalin's trying to take over Spain. And the British are like, hey, what if we back Stalin? Because he's Stalin isn't on the side of the Soviets. He was sort of kicked out of the Soviets when the God creators, um, when when Lenin died, uh, using the new technologies of the dead, they were able to take Lenin's soul and put it in sort of a machine, which um, they call the Presence. It's sort of the Soviet god, and any any of the Soviets who die, they don't go to Summerland. That's the British colony. Um, they get absorbed into this presence, this sort of hive mind, not hive mind, but it's like a singularity, an amalgamation of all the souls and the memories of all these people with, with uh, Lenin at its core. Um, and so since sort of Lenin is still sort of running the country, 
in this sense. Stalin never got to never got to um, take over, so he's upset and he's sort of been trying to play against the Soviets. And his uh, long-term goals are revealed at the end. Uh, we never actually see him in the book, um, but he um, he has spies who are double agents working for him and the Soviets. Um, and his goal is to sort of rewind the clock to before the discovery of the afterlife. Because discovering that there is an afterlife when we can live sort of a happy life in it has cut down on medical technology, medical advances. Like if you get sick or so, or need surgery or something, they're like, well, just, just die and go to the, the afterlife. Like it's no big deal. Um, so he wants to stop all this. Um, so that's sort of the big twist is that Peter thinks he's working for the Soviets and is going to be able to enter the presence, this wonderful amalgamation of thousands and hundreds of thousands of souls. And he can be one with, with this singularity. But his, um, turns out his handlers, his Soviet handlers are actually Stalinists and they're working for Stalin and they're just using him to get information about the colors, uh, as in those who cull, not color, like the red, blue, white. Anyways, um, so yeah, they, um, where was I? The Stalinists, their goal. They want to spark, um the war in Spain into another great war, a second world war, which would cause so much death, which would destroy the afterlife and sort of Stalin could take over the living world uh, and rebuild it in his own image. So that's sort of the goal, but we don't know this until the very end it all comes out, but it's very interesting. Um, uh, yeah, so I think, uh, so yeah, so Rachel, she finally catches up with Peter um, but then there's another mole in the in the winter court who's working for the Soviets and he allows Peter to escape So it's like Rachel failed again So she's like really in trouble now because she had this rogue sort of mission off the books and it went wrong um, And she was going after the Prime Minister's son. And it was just a whole thing um, But she sort of figures out who the second mole is and manages to play everyone in just the way that she catches everyone in the end um, but they get trapped in something called a criminal hospital or a crime hospital um, because in this world you can't murder someone like the mafia the governments they can't murder someone to get rid of them because then you're just going to go to the afterlife and you can tell like hey i was just murdered what the heck so what they do is they put people into long-term comas in this sort of underground uh in these underground hospitals that are surrounded by faraday cages so the souls can't uh, escape um so they find Rachel finds Peter there because he was uh, betrayed by these Stalinists that he didn't realize he was working for. Um, and um, the Stalinists rush in. They're like, ho-ho, we have you surrounded. But uh, Rachel's husband's there who has his sort of soul armor on. And he's like, they're like, Peter, are you willing to sacrifice your soul to sort of stop the this destruction of the afterlife? Because it would destroy the presence, the, the Lenin-Soviet um, one mind as well. Um, so he's like, yes, so she shoots Peter in the head and his soul gets absorbed and eaten by Joe, who then sprouts eldritch tentacles and kills all the Stalinists. And then this is all blown out and revealed, except the, the, the existence of the colors, the, those, I don't, whenever I say colors now, I'm thinking I'm saying C-O-U, C-L, C-O-L-O-U-R. I'm not saying that. I'm saying C-U-L-L. -L. Um, the existence of these colors um, was not revealed to the public. Um, but there was sort of a, at the government level, there is an understanding and there is a de-escalation now between the Soviets and the British. Um, yeah, it's interesting the Americans are mentioned once uh, in terms of, oh, twice. The first time is when they get that defector of a spy. The British are going to try and get all the information they can of them and then send them to the, to the Americans. Um, and the second time is when um, one of them has this, like, a stun gun. And she's like, yeah, I get it from uh, the Americans. And then, like, the stun gun doesn't work or breaks down. And she's like, ah, man, those Americans can't make anything. So America's sort of a much lower status country in 1938 in this realm, in this world. Um, but, yeah, um, one thing is the sort of the Soviet presence, 
the capital P presence, um, sort of Lenin's soul mixed with all of the dead Soviets into sort of the singularity, um, very much gave me AI vibes. Like they said, um, like the presence is great. It's super logical, can figure out the uh, paths and tell people what to do, but it lacks creativity. Um, it, ironically enough, doesn't really possess a soul. I mean, it, it does because it is, but it it uh, it was very much an AI analog um, to me. As I know, this author dabbles in, in dabbles in that stuff. He has several advanced degrees in physics and mathematics, multiple PhDs. Very very smart guy. Um, so I'm sure he's well read on AI and everything. But it it's interesting to see sort of all this technology. It wasn't so much a retro future as um, I don't know the word for it. That's why I use the word diesel punk. But it's uh, very unique. Um, yeah, and pretty short. It's a, it's a one-off book, which is interesting. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's it. Summerland. Pretty cool spy thriller. I haven't really read a spy thriller before. But it, it was, was pretty neat. Not as hard to read as The Quantum Thief. Hard, not as hard to understand, I should say. Although there was a lot, um, a, a very, very intricate um, book, intricate world, uh, well thought out. Ramble, ramble, ramble. That was Summerland.